of the mirror, revealing a secret room behind the mirror. Huh. I was expecting some sort of There appears poison. to be another passageway beyond that. Did you trip again? I call from the uh, just I just threw down the mirror just when in case. When you throw down the mirror, of... that banging noise stops. So there's basically two doors here side by side. Yep. Uh, this door isn't, doesn't happen to be made of metal, does it? Nope, it's a closet. It's made of wood. Okay, guys, uh, wait a second for, before you come in. Just gonna open this closet here as well, just to be sure. Spirit, the ready, open the closet. Okay, inside you find many fine men's suit jackets, blazers, a, a jaunty selection of scarves and cravats. Is the closet really this huge? Or yes, just... there are surprisingly few pants. It mostly seems to be filled with things for the upper body. Oh, huh. well, not sure what to think of that, but okay. That's kind of odd. I can probably guess. Maybe he likes feeling the breeze. I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with his alchemy. It might. Do you know, do you have any reason to? You're not you even idea? there, Ankarash. You're in the hallway as he's randomly attacking doors. <laughs> well, I'm shout I'm shouting into the hallway. Okay. This guy only has shirts. What the? Who only has shirts? Well, some alchemists are known to uh, enhance themselves. This sounds like you're spouting lore. Oh. What? <clears throat> Yeah, I can tell you something useful but not interesting. Sorry, interesting but not useful. Um. <laughs> uh. Yeah, what's interesting here is that uh, the pants that he does have don't seem to match any of his outfits. They're just all like. Um, like black Hakama pants, like the lower pants from uh, martial arts uniform, like hmm. silk, kind of like what you would expect Jeff Bridges to wear, the guy from Tron, <laughs> just, you know, like weird old white guy pants, Whatever, man. trying to look Asian. Okay. That's this guy's got spot. the same kind of pants. Okay. Okay. Got like four pairs, but he's got like thirty shirts. Yeah. Is he a news anchor or something? Is he a news <laughs> oh, and hey, Arthur, I'm willingly giving up poison. Oh hell no! I'm gonna use this. <laughs> I th well, Anchorage has it, so I'm just trying to think of a way of that we can. Remember, I fight dirty, but uh... well, it seems pretty easy throw it at people <laughs> but it's in some sort of like in a packet thing it's in a packet i don't know i'm trying i it is have no a, idea it is in a pressurized packet ah uh, well, we could put both of them into a jar and put something in there and to waste be them sure. both at once no i think these things will explode on contact ah uh, if you think so we can try it later but for now, what I'd like to do is because uh, whatever the hell is back there is probably nothing really happy. Won't be happy to see us. Is that... Are we talking normal, like, door again? Just It's just a doorway. Ah. Just doorway. Just door completely open. There's no door there. Oh. Yep. You can walk right through it. That's true. I could. Are you going there? Is it dark in there? Uh, no, the eastern, as we've already established, it's morning, so sunrise is in the east. You took an hour's rest, but it's still morning. There is light flooding into the room. Wow. I'm totally not expecting to be ambushed in there or anything, so maybe we, uh... I look around for something interesting to... something Nice and heavy that I can 
throw ahead to make a distraction. Sure. There's, you know, a chair in the bedroom that you're currently standing in. Do we want to be discreet in our entrance or make our presence known in advance of it? Well, it already knows we're here, whatever the hell that is. Then uh, perhaps calling out to it before we enter might elicit a positive response. Okay, I put the chair down and I put one leg up. <laughs> put, put the chair down, like here, put one leg up on it and like, okay, sure. Oops, man spreading. Um, Go I'll for it. Peer around the corner through the former mirror from this room and yep. call, um, are you all right in there? Um, you get no reply. When you look inside, you see that the area has been completely ransacked. Uh, it looks like someone has knocked over a number of inkwells. There's papers that have been torn up into shreds. There's a metal cabinet that is on the floor facing up towards the ceiling as well in this room. It seems to have a lock on it. Uh, we heard you being attacked. Are you... Are you sure you're all right? You get no response. Mm. All right, Elodimari, perhaps your method is is the appropriate matter of course at this point. All right. <sighs> I put my foot down, kick the chair, kick the chair ahead of me and in, into the room just in case something's like, you know, right here, and then I jump in jump in with a spear and let like, okay. That guy just looks in slow motion. You're doing the Sparta kick, you're like... Because you know it always makes a sound effect when you go in slow motion. Of course. You fucking Sparta kick the chair, it slides forward, and you leap behind it with your spear out like... ah, And you enter a mostly empty room, <laughs> completely trashed, filled with garbage. What is interesting is on the southern side of the room, by the south window... There are dozens of clay jars stacked into a pyramid. Oh, that can't be good. Ugh. And plus we found the metal canister or something. That was metal. Yeah, a cabinet. cabinet. It's, oh. it's approximately five feet tall and three feet wide so and two feet deep. So it's a pretty sizable cabinet, especially because it's made all out of sheet iron. Are mm. the doors face up or are they, they face up the because ground. the cabinet has been knocked on its back okay. and there's a lock on the door perhaps our uh, victim is I... trapped within the cabinet <laughs> before we do anything with that do i know anything about these clay jars that are so sure. suspiciously stacked into a pyramid why don't you spout lawyer what's well, suspicious good. about stacking jars like how big are the jars um or like a house? mustard container size, so like this big. Oh, like mustard container size. Yeah, but there's dozens of them. You get to ask one question. Go ahead. Oh, Spouting Lore has a list of questions. Oh, I thought you were discerning realities. Spout Lore. Something useful or interesting but not useful. Um. Yeah. You uh, notice, you know, actually, because you've learned quite a bit about Terrigan Flynn, that uh, he is well known for his fine craftsmanship in creating his clay jars. And that many know uh, his clay jars to hold many secrets contained within. Hmm. All of his, his very varied... Um, supply of objects or poisons or potions all of them get sealed in similar looking containers so that when someone comes to buy something you could walk out and no one would know whether you're you're bringing a potion or a poison out it's like a brown paper bag basically hmm. i guess i'll i guess i'll walk up to one and kind of examine the outside of it see if there's a like, I'll take a couple of them, see if there are any identifying markings on each of them. Okay. Uh, when you pick up one of oh, them... Oh, of course. It begins to crumble and shatter. 
Well, that's not good. As it does, it begins to explode in shrapnel outwardly. That's even worse. And you're fairly certain that as this one explodes, all of the rest of them are about to explode with you standing right next to them. So, uh, Inkarash, what would you like to do as this thing begins exploding? Uh... You said these windows are intact? Uh, yes. Yes, these windows are intact. I'm gonna throw it at the further window. There's no throwing this anywhere. It's exploding in your hand. I mean, you've literally picked it up and it's... Like, I touch it and it goes... Yeah. Shit. Uh... <laughs> Duck and cover! Do you want to jump out the window? <laughs> That's something you could do. Uh... Yeah, actually. Okay, it sounds like you're uh, defying danger by rolling decks. Yep. Alright, let's do it. We're probably too far away to help him. Uh, if one of you wants oh. to move forward to defend him, you can. I do so. Okay, roll plus. Describe how you're doing it, actually. Uh, so, I'll tell you what happens to Anchorage. Anchorage, like, this thing starts shattering. You, you try to leap through the southern window that's right above all of them. And you hit the window pane. And yeah, you get your head through it. But you just don't have enough force to get through the window. And you get caught. And you're just stuck in the window, Winnie the Pooh style, with, like, shattered <laughs> glass panes all around you. The explosion is, you know, prepping. <clears throat> Ella Damry, what are you doing? Uh, watching... <clears throat> Sorry? Watching this explosion of clay in the room, I'm just going to take a step backwards around the corner. Yeah, no problem. <clears throat> and try to not get hit in the face with yeah. a clay pot. You, were, you aren't in any threat, then. Uh, is there anything big, aside from the cabinet, where, in, in term, is there a table, anything that I could, uh... Nope. Anything that was intact here has all been torn to shreds. Right, well, I guess it's me then. I'm gonna jump, jump over to him, pull him, and try and shield him with, well, me. Okay, roll your defend move. Uh, <laughs> I should awesome. I should never defend anybody apparently. Awesome. All right. Well, it's time. You both get fucked. <laughs> uh, can each of you roll two d twelve? What? Oh. Uh, yeah, I can. Yeah. He's like, I can. Okay. I don't want to. Oh Karash, my. You take nine points of damage. Oh. Uh -huh. El Damari, you take four points of damage. Okay. Does armor help? Yep. Okay, I take one. Yeah. You jump in the way. You you try to bodyguard for Anchorage. Here's what happens. Anchorage is jumping out the window. Just... <laughs> it blows over him. And he's, his whole butt is covered in shrapnel. Like, those... The runes he had Ow. on his robes... Just, you can see his legs through, like, patches, and it's a smoking ruin. His legs have burns all up and down. His butt is covered in shrapnel and glass. His stomach is cut from where you landed on a broken window. Oh, it's so bad. El Damre, you're jumping over to, like, push him out the window and, and put yourself in place. The explosion happens too soon, and you're flung backwards. And you just, your armor takes the brunt of the shrapnel, and you get, like, a couple cuts across your face. That's it. Uh, butt stuff. That's what this show's all about. <laughs> talking about when people injure their butts. That's it. We're hiring a burglar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Are you still, you still uh, feeling okay there? You look kind of... <laughs> so, it should be noted that the uh, floor beneath Enkirosh is gone now. It evaporated. It's clear that this was some kind of exploding trap, so that when someone did something below, it would drop these pots on top of them. Oh. So you can I... see down into the alchemy lab now, directly beneath you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we triggered the trap the wrong way. 
Awesome. I have one potion well, left. Well, it's creative. Uh, yeah. I have one potion okay. left. I guess I'm going to use it to to fix my legs, but everything. Ugh. Yeah, you know. I, or no, I have two potions left, so I'm going to use second to last one. Okay. You pop uh, your potion. Like I climb out of the window, back, like back to footing inside the room, and I'm like, yeah. I mean, you've got to like jump because there's a five foot square that's not there anymore. You've literally got to like leap back <laughs> to find some place to stand on. The floor is a smoking <sighs> ruin as well. There's probably like thin trails of like uh, wispy smoke coming from where there's like embers burning. Yeah. Your pants are ruined, by the way. So is your robe. Oh. Um, the robe doesn't patch itself due to its otherworldliness. No. Uh, so that's why the guy has no pants. Yeah. Uh, I'll go to the closet and uh, collect a top and toss it down to Enkaresh. I say, I'm sorry about your robe. Uh, top is still fine. Here's this in the inter He said your robe is burned. The butt part of his robe is burned. <laughs> Thanks well, for the pants. Uh, I'll give him one of the six pairs of yoga pants that the guy they had. They fit surprisingly. They're not yoga pants, man. <laughs> yoga pants are like stretchy synthetic fabric. These are nice silk, you know. Several, These are pajama pants. These are hundred, several hundred dollars. Very nice. They're like... The top, the bottom half of uh, uh, the uh, kimono. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hakama. Hakama. I'll, to I'll toss you down a pair of pants, I say. I hope these will be sufficient for you uh, and Koresh uh, in the interim. What are you talking about? I'm trying to get around to you guys. Yeah, you, uh, you, got, you have pants now, Koresh. You get around to everybody else. You have pants. He brought you a nice shirt. What type of shirt did you bring him? Um, I would have tried to find a if he had some kind of robe that's akin to the okay, style he, he, of No, ben no. Koresh's he robe. has a bathing robe that has a, like a stylized TF <laughs> or Terrigan Flynn. Yeah, that's probably the closest thing he has to it's a It's got robe. like a golden watch behind it. Yeah. You know, it's big, white, fluffy, very warm looking. Yeah. The top half of the robe, my robes are still fine. I'll do with the pants for now. Okay. I just don't want you to get sick from exposure. The, uh, slightly uh, more worried about the explosions part, but... Uh, well, that well, is a problem, but hopefully the explosions are over. Although, <laughs> we should get a burgor. Yes, yes. I think uh, we can all agree on that. We need to find some uh, some dude to take care of that for us. You want to see what's <sighs> in this cabinet first? Uh, well, are you confident there won't be another explosion? Something's nope. banging on it. Explosions. Can I target the lock with magic missile? H hang on, hang on. I have. Sure. I have a. Make I have your a cast a spell roll. Like, all right, stand back. I'm going to try magic. Wait, wait, like, wait, he, wait. He, like, he as soon as you flutters magic, his wait. robe out to the side. Stand back. I'm casting magic. <laughs> Tell him, wait, 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 wait. What? Let's... I have an idea. All right. Because I get the distinct feeling there's not going to be something in there that's nice. I suggest maybe we uh, keep the lock on. See, try again if we can actually talk to it, and if we if we're incredibly certain it's uh, hostile, I'm just gonna you know ventilate the thing with my spear a little bit rather than opening it and fighting it. It's a metal cabinet. It have you cabinet. seen my spear? Made out of? Uh, have you not? Have you not heard the the tales of uh, of Sil of Silver Star? It is incredibly I sharp. I feel but... like I feel like I'm not not forcing anybody, but it almost sounds like you're asking someone to check into the legends of the past about this weapon. 
Oh, well, I uh, might know something about this, uh, perhaps, and I will be happy to share that this sword is famous for being... What question do you want to ask me about? Uh, you asked me one question from Bardic Lore, right? I believe it is... I ask you, this sword uh, was the legendary weapon of whom, and where did it become? <laughs> where, where? No, let me let me ask a different question. When did this sword become famous? Uh, I think we're gonna do a flashback, hundreds of years ago, in a black and white scene with a much younger looking Eladamri, right? Yep. And so there's this buffed out elf he's just he's got the spear behind him he's got his arms up like this so it's like over his neck and he's just yeah. like Ella Damri little girl <laughs> I heard you were looking for a good weapon nowadays <laughs> it's too bad the prince couldn't give you a fine weapon like this it's made of star metal Look at the serrated edge on it. <laughs> of course, they wouldn't give a puny little nerd elf like you something fine like this. Maybe you should go spend some more time with the humans, see if they can make you a sword. <laughs> uh, Ella Domri, what do you do as this guy, like, continues to put this beautiful, finely crafted spear in your face and taunt you over and over again? I like that. I say, hey, Arthur, that was supposed to be my father's spear. Yes, this is your father. Oh, okay. He's an ass. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I, sp uh, I stand there. I look at him and like, uh, yeah, well, I guess you've, I guess we have you to thank for that wonderful uh, upbringing. Maybe if you'd uh, actually done something apart from steal the spear, stab your dad. So steal he's just spear, like stab your dad. He he stabs the spear down into the ground. <laughs> he's like, "That's it. I'm tired of you talking back to me. It's time for the ancient elven dueling right. You want to be the man in the house? You have to beat me in Agni Kai." And he goes into a martial arts stance, <laughs> and uh, like. That's what you learn, Frederick William Mayfield the Fourteenth. This is how the spear became famous. The epic duel between father and son in which the son gained the weapon and the respect of his father. Mm-hmm. You said it was made of star metal? Yeah, I say. It's you can see you can tell by I show you the end of it. It's it's not really uh, they it's, it's made of something that isn't from around here. It's impossible. It was impossible to melt. You can see that it's sort of pretty much. It's got a, like uh, iron strips surrounding the me metal bits because it was ac impossible to actually forge into a proper spearhead. It's held in place with metal. It's made out of something that uh, that. Uh, <laughs> well, we don't exactly know what it is, but science what do I know? Explain. What do I know? Do Why don't you spout some out? fucking lore? <laughs> but it can cut through anything. Oh, oh holy fuck. Alright, this is it's what happens. It's roll that I need to win. Give yourself an experience point as uh, the cabinet bursts open. <laughs> <laughs> Inside, you see nothing. And can I have all of you make a roll, please? I need what all of you sort to, of roll? to roll 2d6 plus wisdom. Is this to discern reality? No. Seven. Eight. Uh, Frederick William Mayhem the fourteenth. Give yourself an experience point. <laughs> uh, you got a seven, Ella Domri. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, you find that you're no longer able to speak. <clears throat> Instead, your mouth is just continually. Chap chap scat scat. Uh, Ankarosh, you also have the same, 
you know, you're you're not exactly the same, but you're basically just spouting gibberish constantly. Uh, Frederick Millia Mayfield the Fourteenth. I have a question for you. Uh, okay. If you had to kill one of your comrades, which one of it would you, would it be? <laughs> just who who do you who do you feel like in the future you might have to kill? In the future? Yep. Uh, Ella Damari. Okay, you immediately attack Ankarash. Boom! <laughs> you you start moving toward Ella Damari, and you just wham! Your body just turns toward Ankarash, and you start charging him. Could you please make a hack and slash roll as you whip out your rapier? I do have a... And stab him in the face. I do have a dueling rapier. Hack yep. and slash. Oh, okay. Shit. I guess uh, I mark XP? Yes, and um, I actually forgot to ask this. Anchorage, did you want to interfere with that role? I want to interfere with that role. Uh... Only one person can interfere with it, and I feel like it's oh. definitely the person that is yeah, I'm getting stabbed in the face. You can defend it, El Domri, but you can't interfere with it. I'm going to parry. Okay, go ahead. Roll your bonds with uh, Frederick William Mayfield the 14th. So I have two bonds. So, so roll that's... plus two. Yeah, you parry the fuck out of this. Yeah. Uh, I... You reduce his roll to a four. Um, uh, yeah. Repost. In return, at, yeah, like, as you repost it, you notice something that wasn't there before. Like, as you repost, maybe, like, you get a look at the side of uh, Frederick William Mayfield the 14th's neck, and you see this hand sized slug worm like attached to his aorta can i target not his aorta what missile? do you call this what do you call what do you call that one the uh jugular yeah there's it's like something s there's something like attached to his neck i immediately feel my own neck uh you don't have one however i do need uh frederick william mayfield the 14th to roll a d6 minus 2 Yeah, you take three points of damage. Delightful. As you feel something burrowing into your neck. So, yeah, you charge toward Enkirosh. Bah! He parries the shit out of you, making you look like a child with his practice elven swordplay. And then you're like, oh, God, because something slams into your neck and becomes visible to those around you. Eladomre, there's nothing you need to defend for. Frederick William, Frederick William Mayfield XIV completely misses the attack. But, but there is, do... however, something attached to his neck, yes. which is in dire need of being impaled. All right, let's talk about that. What do you want to do about it? I want to go... Since use the opportunity while he's uh, really, really off balance and not moving around too much to just sort of aim, close one eye, and then just... Try and thrust and go directly in, into okay. that little thing without hitting his neck, because that would be bad. I feel like I know what's going to happen if you roll a six minus. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of afraid I do too. <clears throat> nah, uh, ten. Okay, yeah. What would you like to do here? Uh, deal damage or deal damage plus? I'm fully willing to open myself up to attack, so I'm going to deal what, damage plus d6. Yep. Okay. Uh, um, so, 11 points of damage with two piercing. Yeah, you absolutely just <laughs> knock this thing off of his body. Uh, in the process, though, I think that uh, another one appears and slams into the side of your temple. Can you roll a d6 minus 2? Alright. Uh, you, you take 2 points of damage, which I think is going to do nothing to you with your 3 armor. Yeah. Yeah, so it slams into the side of your head, and your skin is so thick there right now with your 
Or no, no, it's not that you have oh. thick skin. It's that your f reflex is so fast. Like you're like shoo bullet time, and it bounces and uh, what do they call that? Graze. It grazes yeah. you. Grazes me barely, and yeah, you get the idea that this thing was invisible until right before it attacked you, and your your just your preternatural reflexes dodged it in bullet time. I'm gonna detect magic. Uh, okay, roll for it, right? Yeah. Let's do it. Nope. Or yep. What uh, uh, what bad outcome would you like to take? Uh, gonna I'm going to open myself up to attack. Uh, Alright, can you roll a d6 minus 2 as the third one appears out of nowhere and attaches itself to your neck. And does a drive-by. But it too simply bounces off of your fleshy, fleshy neck, wizard. <laughs> and uh, just floats nearby you. Now that you get a good look at it, it's literally like a, a pale worm with like ring sections that get like fatter and then smaller. It's got two tiny eyes and the front end of it is just a mouth like that's it. It doesn't uh, appear to have any other discernible anatomy. Any other uh, magic in the room? Uh nope. Just these flying horrible monsters which they themselves are magical. Uh what do I know about these things? Uh when you spout some lore. I will know as we spout lore, however, you can't tell your party about it because all you can do is babble incoherently. All right. Yeah. You'll know for yourself, but they can't use that knowledge. Something useful, something interesting, but not useful. Uh, you know that uh, creatures such as these are known for their predilection to removing souls from a body. And turning them into currency for planar lords. Uh, well, that's that sounds like something you specifically quaint. would know of. Yeah, that that is uh, that is in keeping with the theme. This, I, you know, I, I'm not going to learn about this until later. But you know, good job on the creepy alchemist. This guy is. Uh, you can Messed thank the guy who wrote this. Mm-hmm. So, what do you guys want to do? Uh, Until magic stealing... missile, the one right in front of me? Okay, Am I ahead. still under its No, you're, you're free now. Okay. All right, go ahead and do that magic missile. Okay, hey. good. Do your damage. Oof. Uh, it explodes. <laughs> into tiny white worm shards all over the place. Um, as it explodes, there seems to have been much, much more mass and matter inside of it than it could have possibly contained in that small of a space. Like, it explodes, and there's chunks of it everywhere. Enormous chunks, the size of your head. Uh, it's fucking uh, disgusting, and it smells like the inside of a tauntaun in here. <laughs> and I thought they smelled bad on the outside. That's yeah. Yep. Uh, Frederick William Mayfield the Fourteenth. Sound like you wanted to get in on this? What do you want to do? I do. I want to rip this thing off me. Uh, it's already gone. That one's I... gone. You've been stabbed near the neck. That one's dead. The only one that's left is the one floating near Ella Domri. Well, since I was right near him to attack, I will use my rapier and try to take that out of the air. Yeah. So you bounce from uh, Inkarash back over to Ella Damri and make your dex attack. Can I try and aid him with it by absolutely lunge, role play by lunge, lunging out and grabbing it and just holding it still? Like here you go, <laughs> using it like a punching bag. Yep. Uh, let's. Yeah, see. he got a seven. You can bump him up to an eight. Uh, well, I can bump it up to a nine, but well, it won't really matter. No, no, you can. With the bonus, is just a plus one. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You guys totally bro high five as you hold this struggling little worm. You stab it. Um, let's see what happens here. You deal your damage to the enemy, and the enemy makes attack on you. So roll your damage as you pierce it with your rapier. You kind of like go through far enough that the worm like bites your hand. 
So, you know, like, you your rapier all the way to the hilt, and then it reaches around and is like, ah, and grabs Ow! you. Ow! Yep. Uh, you deal three damage to it. It seems to be heavily incapacitated and is currently bleeding out way more than its volume of blood could possibly ever be contained inside this thing. Just gushing out. Uh, can creatures. you roll a d6 minus two against yourself? Excellent. You take one point of damage. Do you have any armor? Nope. Alright, you take one point. And I feel okay. like now is a great time to take a break to cliffhang the end part of this fight. So, fuck you, live viewers, and fuck you, YouTube. Get fucked! LOL! 420 YOLO swag! What? <laughs> Follow, like, subscribe, press buttons everywhere, leave a comment in the chat, tell us how you think we're doing. We'll be back in, like, less than ten minutes, guys. Something like that.